Hello, Grats and Gits. I'm pretty excited to be here today. This is actually a really cool video. So I am going through all of the new assassins. If you haven't seen, uh, they're basically everywhere. Even though the IA Codex isn't officially out, we have um, basically indisputable proof that these are what the assassins are going to be. So I'm going to go through all the profiles. I'm going to give you my thoughts, my opinions, and I'm going to give you some ideas of how you're actually going to start utilizing them in your Imperial armies. So let's jump right into it the assassins themselves. So basically, every single one of the four main Imperial assassins, the Calidus, the Calexus, the Vindicare, and the Eversor, have gotten a little bit of a glow up. Now, that does not mean they're all necessarily better. Uh, I would say that their rules are definitely all improved, though. So, but we'll get into when we start talking about like points cost. Some were amazing, some of them were like, eh, that was an option, GW. They all do have very different cost, um, depending on whether they're being run in Imperial Agents, and depending on whether they're being run as an ally in any other Imperial faction, which is actually a really, really great idea. I love that GW did that with this new codex, the Imperial Agents Codex, because it's going to help them fix the balance issue a ton. Because say you're taking, I don't know, an Imperial Agent squad inside of the Imperial Agents Codex. It's it's maybe it might even suck. You might actually never take it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's just conjecture. But if you took that same unit, say, in Space Marines, suddenly it's amazing because it's so cheap or whatever. Well, typically GW would have had to just jack the points cost up on it. Not any longer. Now they can keep the cost for the Imperial Agents version or, or in the Imperial Agents Codex version uh, very stable while they maybe jack up the points cost as an ally. So I think it's a really cool uh, thing that GW's done. I think it's going to help them with their balance a ton. Well done, GW. Now, all the assassins will share one rule. And this rule is pretty, well, two rules because they all have a loan up. All right. Now, they share one, like, IA rule. And this only kicks in if you're playing Imperial Agents. If playing Imperial Agents at the Declare Battle Formation step, you can swap out your assassins. So let's say I am running a Calidus and a, oh, I don't know, a Eversor Assassin. And at the start of the game, I realize, oh crap, I'm playing T-Suns. I don't want the Calidus and I don't want the Vindicate, or and I don't want the um, Eversor. So I'm going to swap and I'm going to be taking a Calexus and a uh, Vindicare instead. So this is actually a really cool option that will allow you to tailor your list legally for the armies that you're playing against. I think it's really cool. Now, I don't really think we're going to see many actual Imperial Agents armies out there, but if you are running it, it is a very cool option that might be used. And that's only available for Imperial Agents. You can't do that if you're taking them as allies for another codex, although that would be very, very interesting. All right, let's just jump into the Assassins themselves. The Calexus. This bad boy costs 100 points if you're playing it as Imperial Agents, and it also costs 100 points if you're taking him as an ally. And the reason why his points don't go up is because he is fairly lackluster. He is better than he was. It, all right. So this is this is a better Calexus than what he previously was in the indexes. So there might be some use for him. So let's go through them. So first off, he's loan up. He has stealth. He has deep strike. And he has the grenades keyword. Very cool. Now he moves seven, T4, four Finvon, uh, four wounds, leadership six, and OC1. That's going to be the same profile for all of the assassins. The only difference being the Eversor has a movement of nine. His gun is a 24-inch gun. It's got three shots. If you're shooting a psychic uh, model with it, it goes up to six shots. Anti-psycher, two up. Ballistic skill two. Strength five, AP two, damage D3. It does have assault and precision. So... If you take this bad boy out and you are, say, um, shooting, oh, I don't know, a, a T-Suns unit, you might be able to snipe out their characters because their characters only have like, you know, three uh, or four wounds each. So this might be a way to actually pop through them, which is admittedly pretty darn cool. So the, Cal the Calexus might have a little bit of use in some niche -er scenarios, but that was basically the same as previously. Is there anything about him that can get us, mm, I don't know, even more excited? Well, let's find out. So then his melee is going to be uh, four attacks, weapon skill two, strength four, AP two, damage two, anti psychic two with dev and precision. So if he's in melee with a psychic character, he's going to kill that psychic character because, I mean, he's got dev wounds on twos. That's pretty good. Um, still not anything that's like, really exciting for 100 points, though. Now we have an interesting thing. His new ability is pretty cool. He gets a three inch deep strike. I like it. Three inch deep strikes are very, very useful. A lot of armies don't have access to this, so, so taking him as an ally to get you that three inch deep strike is can be quite, quite powerful, especially for scoring certain secondaries or just getting into certain positions. Now, one really cool thing that Calexus has, and I don't think anything else in the game has this, is the combination of a three inch deep strike and the grenades keyword. That is pretty dang unique. It's cool. So we can three inch away, 
and then he can grenade you. Of course, he can't charge after doing a three-inch deep strike, but he can he can deep strike down three inches away, shoot you with his psychic ability, and grenades out. He can actually do quite a bit of damage to a lot of psychic units. Um, so don't sleep on this guy. He might have a little bit of an interesting thing. I do think 100 points is still way too expensive for me to really enjoy him. Now, uh, he does have one last ability that is, on paper, reads like it could be pretty good, but because of the timing, I think it sucks. All right. Once per battle, at the start of any command phase, yours or your opponent's, which that's good. Generally, that's good. Every enemy unit within nine inches must pass a battle shock at minus one and at minus two if it's a psyker. Now, if this was, say, at the end of the movement phase, you know, when he comes into the board, this could be sick. But it's at the, at the uh, start of any command phase, which absolutely sucks. That's like really, really bad. And it's probably going to come up once out of every 55 games because... If it's at the start of the command phase, and if it's your opponent's command phase, you know, the start of the command phase is when everyone unbattle shocks. So they could just be like, okay, cool, I'll take the test first, since they they get to choose the order of everything that happens in the start of the command phase. Fail my battle shock. Oh, well, now we all unbattle shocks at the start of command phase. It's just terribly written rules. Uh, it's a terribly written thing that GW put out. If they FAQ this to make it, say, at the end of the movement phase or something like that, when he actually comes in, this could be totally sick. So um, as he is right now, a little cute. But uh, nothing I'm too excited about. Let's talk about the Vindicare. The Vindicare got better, and he is exciting now. All right. Now, this is the problem. So if you're taking him in the Imperial Agents Codex, this bad boy is going to be running you 110 points, which is pretty dang reasonable for what he brings you. If you bring him as an ally, he costs 150 points. And there is no way in heck I'm ever going to be bringing this guy as an ally for 150 points. It's ludicrously overcosted. Um, I, I would be willing to expect that that points cost will be dropping precipitously as uh, the addition goes on and they realize, oh, no one's taking this guy as an ally. How strange. Because he's stupidly expensive. Like, way too expensive as an ally. Um, and Imperial Agents 110, probably pretty fair. All right. Uh, normal normal profile, he has two guns. One's going to be a pistol, so you know you can't shoot the pistol and the rifle at the same time, but his one, his one pistol is a 12-inch pistol. It's got three shots, ballistic skill two, strength six, AP two, damage three, dev wounds, ignore cover and precision. This is actually a really good pistol. If he happens to get tagged in melee, it's pretty dang good. His gun is also pretty pretty cool. 48-inch uh, range, it's ballistic skill two, strength eight, AP three, damage D three plus three, dev wounds, ignores cover, heavy, and precision. So... Your characters are not safe. This is nothing super new. Now, the part that is new is this guy says, forget your loan op. You don't get it. He ignores loan op. He's the only thing in the game that ignores loan op. And that is awesome. It's a huge upgrade to his current ability. And I think it makes him very, very interesting. If only he had the deep strike keyword, which sadly he does not. He has... Uh, he has infiltrator but he doesn't have the deep strike so it will be hard to get him into those positions but if you can do it this becomes cool especially when you combine it with his next ability shield break around declare when you select your targets and it's a once per game ability you get plus one to wound with the exodus rifle unfortunately you can't do this with the pistol that would be sick if you could do it with the pistol and any successful wound is a automatically counted as a critical wound so basically what happens is you have your strength eight Exodus rifle with plus one to wound. And if it wounds the model that it's shooting, it counts as a critical wound and it has dev wounds. So any wound is automatically converted to dev wounds. This rocks. Basically, there is no such thing as a four wound character in the game that is safe anymore. Because he can actually look at them and be like, pew, dev wounds, you don't get an arm save, you don't get an invulnerable save, you die. If you don't have a field of pain, you're just dead. That's awesome, and it's really, really cool, and I think it's super flavorful for the Vindicare. Um, as If you're running this as an Imperial Agents army, you're 100% taking them. If you're taking them as an ally, I don't think you're ever taking them for 150 points. It is just crazy overpriced, especially considering he can only do that once per game. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll be proven wrong as we get some reps on the table, and I might eat my words, but he seems crazy expensive as an ally. Of course, I do believe that will probably be fixed. Let's talk about the Eversor. The Eversaur, if you guys know me, I loved the Eversaur. I took him to the WTC last year, not this year. Uh, he just didn't fix, fit my, licks, my list, but for 75 points, what he brought was unbelievable. Now, he got a rules glow up, and he got a huge points nerf. Let's talk about it. So he went to 110 points um, if you're bringing him inside Imperial Agents and 120 as an ally. 
Now, on initial impact, people are freaking out about how good this guy is, but I've got something to tell you. So first off, he's low up. He, he gets Scout 9, he has Deadly Demise D3, which is funny, and he has Grenades. Movement 9. So yes, if, he, if you don't Scout block him, he will move 18 inches turn 1, which is pretty sick. Um... The rest of it is normal uh, assassin rules. He does always have access to advance, shoot, and charge. So effectively, if you're thinking about his threat range, as long as you don't block his scout movement, this guy can go 18 plus D6 and charge whatever he wants. And when we look at his uh, weapon profile, they're pretty good. So his pistol profile is nothing special. It's 12-inch range, 4 shots, hits on 2, strength 4, AP 0, damage 1. It is anti-infantry 3 up with pistol and precision, and it has sustained hits 3. I know sustain hits three sounds amazing, but on that profile, it doesn't really matter. Now, however, his sword is a little bit different. So he's got six attacks, hits on two, strength five, AP two, damage D, damage two, sorry, not D2, damage two. <laughs> it is anti-infantry three up um, with precision and sus three. It is not a pistol. Sorry, I copied and pasted that part. So sus three on that sword is actually sick because suddenly you roll two sixes and the rest of them are hits and you just add a casual six attacks which is pretty amazing. It is a little bit swingy, but it is actually really solid. It means that this guy can hit really hard into your units of infantry. Now, once per battle in the movement phase, he gets to add six inches to his normal move and add three to his attack's characteristic profile. This sounds insane. Basically, what it means is that he is guaranteed to go 15 inches movement, and this could be, you know, turn one after he did a nine-inch scout, to get wherever he wants to go on the battlefield and then with nine attacks, hits on two, strength five, AP two, damage th two, anti-infantry three up with precision, sustain hits three. I think on average, he's going to be hitting you something like 12 to 15 times. And that is really, really good. Um, people think that he's amazing and he's broken. He's going to ruin the game. He's not. And let me uh, explain why. For 110, 120 points, this is a little overcosted. There is another model in the game, which does precisely this, only maybe slightly better and he is 115 points and you literally never see him may i introduce you to the solitaire so the solitaire is a eldari unit um well it might and you can also take him in inari and he is a rock star um his profile is even better than the eversource so he moves 12 inches he has a three up invulnerable save he has fights first still has blown up his weapon is a base 9 attacks, hitting at strength 6, AP 2, damage 2. Granted, it doesn't have sun sus hits, and it doesn't have anti-infantry hits, but it does go to strength 6, which is wounding basically every infantry in the game, outside of very ex exclusive, like, your Koso days on 3 ups anyway. Koso days, it'll be wounding on 4 ups. It does have precision built into it, and its ability, well, once it can always declare a charge in a turn in which to advance, and since you're playing Eldar, you can always fate dice this to make it very fast and once per battle in your movement phase this model can use this ability before it makes a normal move if it does until the end of the turn add 2d6 inches to the move characteristic and add three attacks so you can guarantee take him to his 12 hits and you can add 2d6 to his casual 12 inch move it is um it is just straight up at least as good as the eversore it's not quite as spiky as the eversore but it is faster and it generally will hit at least as hard because it's more reliable than the eversore and has a better invulnerable save, so it's got a better chance of living through a clapback for basically the exact same points, and we never see it. That's why I don't think the Eversor is going to be all that great. I think I prefer the Eversor at 75 points when he had to choose Advanced and Charge, Sustain, Hits 3, or Precision. Um, I just think he was better there. Uh, 110, 120, it just seems super overcosted, but his new abilities are cool. Maybe we'll see him on the tabletop. Then we have the Kalidus. Kalidus is not very different. She is still 100 points. And hilariously, like the one assassin that is always going to be taken by every ally is still 100 points. It's not going up, but the others are for whatever reason. Uh, she kept basically all of her same rules. Deep Strike, Lone Up, Fights First, Infiltration. She has uh, her normal 12-inch Torrent Gun, which didn't change, and her normal attack profile didn't change at all. Five attacks, weapon skill, two up. Strength five, AP four, damage two with lethal and precision. Now... Her Uppy Downy is almost the same. It's slightly different. You can no longer Uppy Downy if you're within three inches of your opponent. But at the end of the fight phase, she gets to fall back D6 inches. So if she falls back outside of three, she could then be, you know, Uppy Downy. And then she still has her Reign of Confusion 12-inch aura with a plus one CP cost. So she's still good. She's still great. You're still going to see her all the time. Uh, no real change with her. It's just, I just don't understand how GW decides what's going to be costed what. It really doesn't make sense to me. I... 
as much as I actually think GW is just doing a rock star job with 10th edition, and I really do. So if you guys are watching this, like I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of 10th edition. I think you're doing awesome. I really think you need different play testers because the way that you are doing initial points cost is just weird. And I'm not sure your play testers are helping you out enough unless your play testers are helping you and you're not paying attention to what they're saying, which you know, I don't know. Anyway, let's give some final thoughts on these assassins. Kalidus is still awesome. You're still going to see her all over the place. She's effectively exactly the same. The Eversaur is definitely better, but he's also far too expensive. So if you dropped his points cost down to that 90 point level, I would strongly be considering him again. Although I definitely would prefer he didn't change and stay at the 75 points cost. The Vindicare is actually good now. So if you're taking him inside Imperial Agents, you're taking the Vindicare. He is actually good. But at 150 points as an ally, nah, never. No chance will you see him at all. The Klexus is cute, uh, but I doubt we're going to see him at 100 points. It's just crazy. Honestly, that guy's like a... That guy's like... A, he's a 70-point model, maybe? I mean, the, the combination of the 3-inch Deep Strike with a... Uh, oh, I, I also think I forgot to mention that he's got a 2-up Gyono painting and Psychic Attacks. So he actually is really good in very, very certain circumstances. So if you are playing against Grey Knights or if you're playing against your Thousand Suns, he's probably still pretty good. But guess what? Flamers still kill him. Storm Bolters still kill him. So it's not like he's great, right? So I don't know. I think he's, his points just need to be dropped by like 30 points. At that point, having the 3-inch deep strike with the grenade thing is probably worth it. So Kalexis is cute. He's just way too expensive. So here's my final opinion on it. Assassins, if you are taking Imperial Agents, absolutely rock. And you're going to be taking them, especially with the ability to swap them out pre-battle. However, as I don't think that we're going to be seeing all that many Imperial Agents actual armies, which I could be wrong about, by the way. We need time to get these on the table. We need time to get these play tested. Um, I think the Kalidus is probably the only assassin we're going to be seeing, just like it is now. I don't think there's any difference at all. The only difference could be with certain armies. I think Custodes might want to think long and hard about that Eversor. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, this was my Assassin's Review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're excited about the Assassins, then my friends, smash the like button, share it with your friends, and let's get on with another day of happy prepping. Bye-bye. Cheers.